Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to Molten Music Technology. Today, we're taking a look at the Korg NTS-1. This, this little thing, this little fella here. Now, the Korg NuTech NTS-1 has a superpower. It has the ability to run the same custom oscillators that the Prolog and the Minilog XD can. And as far as features goes, for a little $99 synth, that is quite extraordinary. So what I want to look at today is how that actually works. What do you do? What does it sound like to some degree or another? What's available? And how does that all work in this tiny little boxy environment? I mean, first of all, there's a couple of things to consider with the NTS-1 because it's not identical to the Prolog or the Minilog XD. It's not the same internals. It just isn't. You don't have the same control system. It doesn't get mixed through with other waveforms. And the big thing, of course, that's missing is any polyphony. You're getting one note is a monophonic thing. So if you consider that many of the oscillators may have been designed with polyphony in mind, that's not what you're going to get on the NTS-1. However, what I've come to really like about this whole thing is that all you're changing is the oscillator. Now, because we've had different forms of synthesis available in synthesizers before. We've had uh, boxes that run different software synths, or we can load software synths onto hardware hosts, or you have something like the Roland Plugout, where you've got an entire new synthesizer underneath somehow the hardware of another synthesizer. And all that stuff is, is cool and groovy in that. But what I don't really connect with is the fact that the control system then becomes not what the synthesizer is about. It's like with the System 8. With the Roland System 8, you've got a, a, a decent polyphonic System 8 synthesizer playing it, all the knobs work, you know what you're doing, la di da di da You then load up the Jupiter 8 plug out and you go, but the the knobs don't, the knobs are no longer kind of what they are and some of them work and some of them don't. And although it sounds great, you don't feel, well, at least I didn't feel, you get a Jupiter 8 experience. Whereas I get a better experience of that if I'm using a software synth because of the GUI is visually representing what's going on. And that suspends disbelief better, I feel, than borrowing some other synth's entire control system in order to make that work. Is this, does this make any sense? At all. So what I'm getting to is the fact that if you change and customize the oscillator, just that small part, the sound generation part of the synthesizer, then everything else within there remains the same. So your filter is the same. You already know how to use that. You've been using it before and there's stuff that's already there. So you know where that is. You know how that works. The envelopes are the same. Again, you know all of that. The effects are the same. So I guess what I'm getting at is the amazing thing about this Korg technology is that it changes the sound generation and yet gives you everything else the same so that the instrument still works as an instrument, as it was designed. And that in some way goes towards making it feel very hardware rather than, oh, you've just stuck in another bit of software, which is the reality of what you've done. But the feeling and impression that you get is the same as using the onboard, inbuilt, already there oscillators. The other consideration is that the majority of the custom oscillators and effects that are out there are chargeable, do have a cost, are premium, are made by companies who have put a lot of work into them and would very much appreciate it if you would buy them. And so very quickly for a, a cheap little synth like this, you are adding to the cost tremendously as soon as you start wanting to add custom oscillators. Now there are some free ones out there, but they have kind of their limitations and honestly playing with the the more premium ones has been a lot more enjoyable so enough enough of this let's bring you in and let me explain what i've got set up here and we'll we'll have a bit of a play a bit of a play and a bit of a talk about what we can find right here we are trying to get everything in shot all at once obviously the the cork thing's a little bit weeny so it's always hard to get a good shot of that if you want to include anything else at all. So I have got this little launch key thing here, which is plugged in via MIDI directly into this. This is then connected via USB into the computer in order to power it and to connect to the librarian software, which we'll come to in a moment. I then happen to have the outputs 
of the NTS-1 going through Ableton Live so that I can run a little bit of scope software because I thought that might be interesting. So that's the setup. I'll be using arpeggiators from the little launch key keyboard rather than its own one because it's just a bit fiddly and it's easier for me to do it from here. So let me just give you a very quick example of the sound as it is. This is the sawtooth sound. And there are two main controls. The first control is shape. Which is rather lovely. And then you've got a second control, or the alt control, which in this case brings in a sub bass. But that may change depending on the oscillator. The other thing you have, of course, is the effects engine, which is these three bits here. And these are simply awesome. And I imagine a lot of the really good sounds that we hear are really down to the effects engine. So it's already good. It's already sounding pretty fantastic. And so if you're putting in another oscillator, is it only really going to sound fantastic because it's going through all those same fantastic effects? Or does it have its own fantasticness? That's a little bit of something that I'd kind of like to look at or demonstrate or show you and see what you feel about that. Now, in terms of control system, as I said, that it uses the same custom oscillators as the Minilog and the Prolog, but they both have a much larger control surface with dedicated buttons for various bits and pieces. What you get on this, you get the two, as I say, as I showed you, the shape and then a secondary parameter change. What these represent on the Minilog and the Prolog are the shape and the shift shape. So those are two parameters that exist on the larger keyboards that are doing the same thing. There are other parameters you can access on the Minilog and the Prolog that may not be accessible from here, but there is a deeper level which gives you a few more parameters which we'll look at. So how do you use this thing? Well, you need to be connected up to the librarian. Now this needs to have a MIDI connection to this all by itself, which means when you're running a door at the same time trying to load oscillators, it can run into some some problems in what is it that has the MIDI driver and what's using it and what's not using it and what's available. And so I heartily recommend not running it at the same time as a door, which is what I'm doing at the moment, of course. But I've gone into Ableton and told it to ignore this. So only this is using it. And that's why I'm using MIDI direct to here rather than going via USB, because it all gets a little bit too complicated. And I found that the NTS-1 will trip over and fall if it's getting MIDI from too many places all at once and trying to use multiple drivers in multiple places. So I've just tried to keep it as simple and straightforward as possible. So what you do is you open up the librarian. The librarian sucks the information out of the NTS-1 and presents you with whatever's already stuffed in there. At the moment, nothing at all because I've emptied it out. And in here, we have the opportunity to load up 16 oscillators, 16 modulation effects, that's the chorus flanging phases, eight user delays, and eight reverbs. So that's 48 slots within this little thing for your own custom oscillators, sound generators, effects, reverbs, and, and all that stuff. And of course, you can put in a whole lot more than that, it's just it can only retain 48 at a time. So I have a folder of these oscillators that I've downloaded off the internet and stolen from, from various uh, library suppliers. Very kindly, they've allowed me to have them for the purposes of demonstration. So one of the custom oscillators I'd like to show you first of all is the free one, the famous free one. That's the open source oscillators from the Platts from Mutable Instruments, the Eurorack module. 
And these have been pulled out of there and re-wrapped as Korg oscillators, which is awesome. And I've seen plenty of videos of these looking awesome, sounding awesome, and being completely awesome. However, on this, they just don't seem to be. Here's what I mean. So to load up anything into there, all you do is drag and drop. You can also go to file, import, that kind of thing. But dragging and dropping tends to be an easier way of doing things. So we'll stick in one there. One there, and so on. That'll do for the moment, because I'm not going to stay with these for very long, for reasons you'll see in a moment. Once you've loaded in what you want, you then hit Send All, and it will complain that there's no Korg driver installed. And I haven't installed a Korg driver for this, because it doesn't actually need it. Windows already has a driver for this. It finds it, installs it, and it all works perfectly. Even if you do install the proper Korg USB driver, you still get this window. I don't know what it's about, I don't really care. Hopefully it's something that will get fixed in due course. There we go. So now, within our little box, we can go onto oscillator, dial across, and there are the Platts oscillators. Now our little four digit screen here is not brilliant. I mean, it's not <laughs> helpful. You have to cry go, all right, so yeah, that's okay. That's that one, uh, that one, that one. Now my understanding of these oscillators is that that first one is additive. Next one is FM. Next one is granular. And there's a string one and then virtual analog and some wavetables. Great. So let's have a quick look to see what they sound like. The FM one. Sometimes the control makes sense, sometimes it doesn't. You just kind of have to go with it. The granular one. And the string. Now all I'm saying is, right, that they don't really sound a whole lot like the ones either on the Microfreak or the videos I've seen of the Platts or the Prologue or Minilog. But there are hidden parameters. If you hold the oscillator button and turn the type knob, you then get into some more deeper bits and pieces. So, for instance, we've got harmonics here, which then these extra parameters are only controlled on this second knob. The first one tends to, I think, mostly still control the same parameter as it does when this is not engaged. I mean, I don't really know... I mean, it's definitely doing something, but I'm a bit of a loss as to what's actually going on. If I take off the delay and the reverb, so it's completely dry. I don't know, it just doesn't sound like any kind of string sound I'm expecting to hear. If I go back to the granular one as well, that just... There's not a whole lot going on. Some of the other ones, for instance, there's some sort of wave shape.
they have possibilities. But all I really wanted to say was that these particular free ones, because I, I absolutely imagined that when I was loading up oscillators, there would be a whole load of free ones done by the community, people creating oscillators, they're free everywhere. But I found them really difficult to find. And the ones that I did find, these ones, just sounded a bit, I don't know. So let's move on to something that does sound pretty awesome. So let's start with Sign Vibes. Now they have produced a bunch of both effects and oscillators. Let's start with the bent one, a tube one, and one called Turbo. Then in the effects side of things, they have a dipole and a dipole plus, drift, stutter, pair of filters, and a time delay thing. Hit send all. See, that's already interesting. Now if we look into the deeper bits, we have parameters like type and LFO, for one for rate, one for amount, and then a couple of envelopes. If we turn on a bit of reverb, It's a whole other world. It's a really nice range of interesting, tweakable, explorable, discoverable sounds. There's another one called Tube.
In the extra settings you've got type of noise. Type of resonance. And then turbo. Fabulous stuff, but we haven't even touched the effects yet. So if we go to the modulation section, we should then, after the flanger, find the other effects. This is one called Drift. Then a couple of filters, high pass. Turn it down because these are so fierce. Yeah. 
and a low pass. And then there are some in the delay side of things. So that's after the tape delay. We then get a stutter. Right, and then this is a really long delay time because the delay time on the internal effects is only about, uh, oh, it's not even a second, I don't think, whereas this is a lot longer. Let's try some from Tim Shoebridge. Synthesis, sound designer, all those sorts of things. So his first oscillator is called One. The second parameter doesn't appear to do anything, but the shaping is really nice. That is a truly beautiful thing. What else has he got? He has a, a pluck, I think. See, that is the sort of thing that I expected the, the Platts oscillator to sound like.
there's some fantastic detuning going on there. So what you've got in there is different harmonics coming in. You're dialing in bits like you would pull draw bars on an organ. Interesting. Really nice, really very nice. So you can see, hopefully, you can see and you can hear that these additional oscillators from people like Sign Vibes and Tim Shoebridge just bring a whole other level, a whole sort of sonic palette that wasn't there. It wasn't there before. And of course, combining it with effects and reverb, sticking that filter in there, it all just, it all just comes alive. So next up we have the Everything Bundle from Dirtbox. They also have some delays and some modulations. For this first one, PWG, it says it's a parametric waveform generator. 
it uses some kind of elastic pulse width modulation with upper and lower halves of a waveform that contract and expand in opposition to each other depending on the position of the shape control. Hmm, interesting. The upper and lower waveform shapes are controlled independently. The upper waveform adjusted with the shift shape. And the lower one is down in here somewhere. Seems the same to me. Lovely. It's just lovely. Okay, moving on. They have these monster. Whoa. Let's try to get a bit more sense of turning other things off. Well, that's amazing. Okay, the the second oops, the second knob doesn't seem to do anything. Let's see what else it's got in there. Thank you. 
So in the morph oscillator, you have a bunch of wavetables which you can morph between. Of course you can, that's what you do with wavetables. that did something. There's another one with a different bunch of wavetables. This is an organ. Wow. one called Superwave doesn't seem to do a whole lot to start with but then when you start digging in a little bit
blew it up. Now, sadly, this is also something that can happen. And to clear it, the only thing you can do is unplug it and plug it back in again. So at the time of making this, I mean, these still aren't available for sale. I understand they've been put back a few weeks as well. So there does seem to be a couple of things, a couple of little quirks that they're probably still trying to work out. But now we've reset back to here. Everything is still within the unit. But whatever changes you've made or anything you've made, that's now all gone. Let's try some of the extra dirt box effects. I put on a little bit of reverb just for fun. But under delay, they had, after take delay is the last one of the internal ones, they had this one. Another version of that. has a delicious sort of wobble loss of stability. And I'll just finish off by taking some modular from over here and running that through it just to use the onboard effects. So add a bit of reverb. Stick in a delay.
So there you are, a, a journey, an exploration into those custom oscillators and effects for the Korg NTS-1. What a fascinating little box. There's tons in here. There's so much that you can do. It's just a little monophonic thing. It just makes a couple of noises. But the fact that you can stack it up with all these different custom oscillators is just, it's just extraordinary. And extraordinary in such a little cheap and simple little box. I mean, it's not perfect at the moment. There's the odd crashing. There's some crackling and other bits and pieces going on. But for a 99 quid piece of kit with all this potential for different sounds and different tones and, and stuff, not just as a sound generator, but as in a sound processor, taking sound out of a modular and running that through it. That's interesting. I mean, I can imagine just sellotaping it to the side of my thing here, right? And using it. I mean, funnily enough, this is exactly 3U big. So uh, it could potentially be stuck into some kind of front panel and stuffed into my rack itself. That's interesting. Because just as an effects box, you know, a 99 quid multi effects box, which has got delays, reverbs, and chorus type effects that you can run in a chain. That's that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Shame you can't use a filter, I suppose, but then you can get oscillators which are filters and they stick those in there and use those instead. And of course you can use the audio input alongside the sounds it's making as well. So, so there you go, yeah. Wow, what a thing. And I imagine as this gains popularity and as there's more prologues and mini-logs out there, then more oscillators are going to come along. And although, you know, the ones that I've shown are mostly charging real dollars for them, some of the Tim Shoebridge ones are only like seven or eight quid a pop. You don't have to buy the whole bundle to get everything. And even if you do, those are sort of 40 quid, 50 quid. It varies. It varies. So there is some additional investment required to get the higher quality oscillators, but they are, they are really good. They are really good. And I think probably worth it if you're thinking about getting one of these little fellas. So there you go. I hope that was helpful. And in the meantime, go and make some tunes. <laughs>